Rodney Dangerfield. All right, Internet Protocol version 6. First, I gotta get the remote working. There we go. All right, Internet Protocol version 6, IPv6. So we started running out of IPv4 addresses, and so because of that, as all we kept adding more and more network devices, and especially all these wireless devices, we ended up having to create a new standard because IPv4 addresses were running out. With IPv4, we only had 4.2 billion addresses, which sounds like a whole lot, but there's a lot of people in this world who have more than one IP address. Um, you think of the average consumer, they have a network TV, they have their laptop, their desktop, their cell phone, their tablet, that's four or five IP addresses per person, and so 4.2 billion addresses didn't go far enough. So IPv6 was introduced, uh, which addressed the problem of having enough IP addresses for generations to come by going, instead of having a 32-bit address, having a 128-bit address. So if you do 2 to the 128th, you get 340 undecillion addresses, uh, which basically works out that every person on the planet can have 5 times 10 to the 28th IP addresses. So we should never run out again, is the thought. Um, some people always ask what happened to IPv5. Basically, it was an experimental standard uh, that was abandoned. It did. Uh, it worked with 64-bit is what they were using, and they decided that, hey, just to play it safe, let's go to IPv6 and we'll use 128-bit. A lot of the stuff that was in IPv5 did get put into IPv6, though. So what's the difference between IPv6 from IPv4? The big difference is there's no broadcast anymore. So all the broadcasts have gone away. It also doesn't allow for fragmentation. If you remember before we spoke about fragmentation, I said you have to worry about that because it can be a security issue. And the maximum transmission unit size uh, could be used as a way to get malware through a network. With IPv6, all fragmentation got thrown away because every time you set up a session, it creates a new maximum transmission unit size for that particular session, eliminating all fragmentation. The other nice thing about IPv6 is it can coexist with IPv4 during the transition. So right now, most people are running IPv4 and IPv6 simultaneously and probably don't even know it. Uh, the other thing you can do with IPv6 is you can tunnel it over IPv4. So even if you have old IPv4 devices like switches and routers, they can still support IPv6 tunneling over them. And the other nice thing about it is it is a simplified header. So when we looked at IPv4, we had this big, long header with all the different fields. There was 12 fields. Now we're down to only five fields, simplifying overhead and making it go faster. So if you look here at the headers, you can see how simple it is, the one on the left, which is IPv6, versus the one on the right. And that's really going to make it a lot quicker and easier for us to send stuff. Um, essentially, what we have is our version, our traffic class, our flow label, our payload, our next header, and our hop limit source and destination, and off the information goes. So what does an IPv6 address look like? It looks something like what you see on the board. Uh, IPv6 is harder to remember uh, than IPv4 because it's not just four decimal digits anymore separated by dots. Instead, we are using hexadecimal. Each hexadecimal digit represents four bits, binary bits. And again, this is a 128-bit address, so your address here in IPv6 is going to be up to 32 hexadecimal characters. Um, the reason why I say up to 32 is because we have this thing called the double colon, as you can see here after the 2002, that actually can abbreviate multiple areas where there are zeros. So if you had four zeros in a set of colons, like we have in the top here, we have five sets of four colons represented by a single of zeros, represented by a single zero each because leading zeros can be dropped. Uh, it can then all be smushed down into a double colon representing that blank space of zeros. And so if I was going to rewrite this address from the bottom as 32 bits, I would put 2002 colon and I would fill in all the rest with zeros until I get back out to the full 32 bits, 32 characters worth of address. In IPv6 we have three data flows like we did in IPv4, but they're a little bit different. So the first one is the same. It's unicast. And the only difference here is that instead of using an IPv4 address to go from a single sender to a single destination, we're going to use an IPv6 address. In this case, four A's, a bunch of zeros, and a one is our server. And then we have uh, device two and device three at the end there. Uh, this is the same as IPv4, except we're using IPv6 addressing. Multicast is also the same from IPv4. In this case, we're going to join a multicast group again. 
and the traffic will be destined for that multicast group, in this case, FF00 double colon A, and that will go to both devices that have subscribed to the multicast group. The difference is the last one, which was broadcast in IPv4, is now called Anycast in IPv6. Before with broadcast, it went to every and all devices. Now with Anycast, traffic can go from a single source destination to the nearest of multiple devices on a network. And so this is designed to let the host initiate the most efficient updating of routing tables for a group of hosts. IPv6 can determine the gateway that is closest to the host and then send the packets to that host as if it was a unicast communication. So for instance, if I'm sending something to the BBB colon one server up in the top right, it's going to go through the cloud, find the closest router, which in this case would be router two, and then send it upward, as opposed to sending it through router three or router four. Um, that host can then any cast it to another host in the group until all the routing tables are updated as well. Um, this isn't used as much for peer-to-peer -peer communication as much as it is for router-to-router -router communication. And that is IPv6.